Welcome to Horrifica. I'm your host, Colin Feltham. In tonight's episode, we're taking a trip to Georgetown, Washington, D.C., as we look back at one of the most influential and controversial horror pictures to ever grace the silver screen, a movie so terrifying back in 1973 it had people fainting in the aisles, running scared shitless from theaters and keeping them up at night for weeks later. A story of demonic possession, a fight between good and evil, and a priest's own battle with faith. So, without further ado, get your crucifix at hand and use it in a respectful manner. Lock all your doors, turn out all the lights as we take a look back at quite possibly the greatest horror movie ever made, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Getting Under the Skin, The Exorcist Review. There. I've known my gut. I'm telling you that that thing upstairs isn't my daughter. Georgetown Northwest. Washington, D.C., on a quiet street in a quiet neighborhood stands a normal house. Chris McNeil, an actress, resides there with her 12-year-old daughter, Reagan, a normal, sweet, average 12-year-old girl. That is, until she urinates on the carpet in front of her mother's party guests, becomes increasingly violent, spouts vulgar language and crude obscenities. Language so disgusting it would make a sailor blush, uses a crucifix in the most inappropriate of ways, rotates her head 360 degrees and vomits green goo on the odd occasion. By now it's looking a lot like demonic possession, and somebody needs to call a priest. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, most great movies have one thing in common, and that is that they all started life as great novels. The Exorcist is no exception. And when the author of that great novel also writes a great screenplay for the movie, in this case the genius William Peter Blatty, add into that formula a visionary filmmaker like William Friedkin. Then you have started out on the right foot to making one of the most celebrated movies of all time. shaking for nothing. <laughs> How about you? Oh, it's very, very real. I don't like it. I want to go home. I want to see if it's going to make me throw up. It's me on. It's one of the most grossest movies uh -huh. in the world. <laughs> I ain't never took my coat and my face like that. Uh, I thought it was uh, very powerful. It just turned my mind. <sighs> terrible. But I just found it really horrible. We just had to come out. I couldn't take it more. People are extremely depressed by this. It doesn't bother me that much. I guess it bothers her more than it bothered me. Fantastic movie. Mm -mm -mm. I, I don't like it in Spanish or English or French. It's really gross. You didn't have a second? Yeah! <laughs> it was really terrific. I 
even think. I can't even talk. It makes my heart beat too fast. <laughs> I've never in my life known a movie where people would faint. I mean, it's hard to make people faint. Well, as soon as they faint, I get out smelling salts. And like the devil coming out of her. <laughs> I just couldn't take it. I'm going to stop here for the rest of the movie. You're not going to go back? No, I'm too scared. I never get scared. I am too scared. I believe. The inspiration for the novel came from a real-life case of suspected demonic possession, which resulted in an exorcism in 1949, which Blatty had heard about whilst he was a student in 1950 at Georgetown University, which resulted in the novel itself taking place in said town. The novel was released in 1971. Blatty had had previous screenwriting experience and took to adapting his own novel and personally chose Friedkin to direct. Blatty would also take role of producer. Casting the role of teenager Reagan would prove difficult with the adult nature of the picture. Janet Lee would not let her daughter, a young Jamie Lee Curtis, audition for the role. And Willy Wonka star Denise Nickerson, who played Violet Beauregard in later interviews that her parents had found the script too dark. Friedkin was about to consider an older actress to step into the role when Eleanor Blair came and introduced her daughter, Linda. Linda's credits up until that point had mostly been in modeling and one small soap opera role. But Billy Friedkin thought she was perfect, and with that, Linda Blair took the role of Reagan. Jack Nicholson was first considered for the role of Father Damien Karras, but it would finally end up in the capable hands of Jason Miller. Ellen Burstyn would fill the shoes of Reagan's mother, Chris McNeil, Lee J. Cobb as Lieutenant William F. Kinderman, and the legendary Max von Sydow as Father Marin. Principal photography for The Exorcist began in August 1972 with a schedule of 105 days. But due to accidents on set and production problems, amongst other issues, it took over 200 days to wrap, also resulting in the film running 2.5 million over budget ultimately costing the studio 12 million. With box office takings of $428 million, it's fair to say The Exorcist sure did make its money back. Released on December 26, 1973, Fifty years later, this movie still has that same impact. It's amazing cinematography, stunning makeup and in-camera effects. Friedkin's style of direction here is flawless. The movie seems documentary-like with high drama production quality. You feel a darkness swelling. It sits with you for days, weeks, months, even years later, each time you build up the courage to watch it. You appear to be hit with a different experience each time but never one that is any less enjoyable than the time before. Every role here is cast perfectly, every performance a standout. It's been parodied, it's been copied. It's also had its fair share of sequels, one that's quite possibly one of the worst fucking movies ever to be shit out of a mainstream studio and smeared across a screen in living memory. Another that's almost, almost on par with the original masterpiece and two others that I really couldn't give a donkey's dick about. There's a reboot in the works. God fucking help us, because we all know, me, you, everyone, there ain't no way anything will ever touch this. The one that still stands up to this day, the one we all still talk about, the one that's still getting under your skin, and that is this, the original, the 1973 classic, The Exorcist. Possibly not just the greatest horror movie ever made, but possibly the greatest movie ever. <laughs> You know what she did? Dark hunting daughter!